I might try making sugar-free jam today. I've been making fig jam with the figs out of our garden for quite a while, but it calls for a lot of sugar. Like for four cups of figs, it's two cups of sugar. Um, so I know part of that is the preservation, but also part of that is the sweetening. Uh, I was looking up online some substitutes that I could use, and it turns out that the stevia and monk fruit hold by whole earth is a substitute you could use. And we already used that in our coffee, so I had quite a bit of it here. So I thought I'd try it. Um, so I'm only trying it with a cup of my figs because I don't want to ruin them. And right now I have a cup of figs that I have taken off the stems, topped them, and then quartered them and covered them with just enough water to barely cover them. And now I'm simmering them over a medium heat on the stove. In the back I have some jars that I'm sterilizing. Um, so I'll simmer those for about 10 minutes once they start to get a little bubbly. Uh, and then I will add the dry ingredients and the uh, lemon juice. So my normal recipe would call for two cups of sugar. And if I quartered that to the cup of figs that I have here, that would be a half a cup of sugar. And a half a cup of sugar, according to the Whole Fruit website, where they actually have a really nice calculator if you are wondering about how much to substitute. Um, so a half a cup of sugar would be substituted with 16 packets of their whole earth uh, stevia and monk fruit sweetener. And then I'm quartering the lemon, which would normally be a half lemon, so about a tablespoon, and in this case I'll use a quarter of a tablespoon of lemon juice for my one cup of figs. And then I always put a sprig of rosemary in there for a little added flavor. I do not know if this is going to preserve well, so I will have to test it out on this and uh, see if it lasts. I'll do the first one as a refrigerator batch and just check the taste. If it works, um, I'm gonna do a little bit of research into whether or not it could be shelf stable, um, just based on the boiling of the bottles and canning process. So I will be back once these get into a good simmer. Quick little progress check, um, about five minutes in, these are simmering nicely and you can see that the figs are starting to break down very nicely. I'm stirring them every now and then just to make sure they don't stick, but there's enough water there that they're not going to. That water will boil off as they cook, by the way. And some of you are probably saying, if you're an experienced fig jam maker, wow, there's not a lot of ripe, really ripe figs in there. But some of them seem to have a lot of green on them, but that was purposeful on my part. I'm saving my really ripe ones in case this doesn't work out. I can use them for the jam that I make with sugar. Um, but since the sweetener is so much sweeter than sugar, I thought I would try some semi-ripe figs. So they were, you know, mostly brown with a little bit of green, which wouldn't be as sweet. And then if the sweetener is a little bit sweeter, it's not going to harm it. It's not going to make it overly sweet jam. So yeah, these are coming along nicely. In fact, I'm going to turn the heat down a little bit. They're almost getting to a boil. So yeah, that looks good. Um, and I'm just gonna keep checking on these every now and then. And uh, just break up the peel a little bit because when you make big jam, you don't have to peel them. You include the peels and all. So yeah, so I'm just breaking that up until it gets nice and mashed. And then I will add all my other ingredients. Okay. I'm just gonna sprinkle in the uh, monk fruit and stevia and then add the lemon juice. And then I'm gonna add the sprig of rosemary and I'm gonna stir that around. And once that uh, monk fruit and stevia has all dissolved, then I'm gonna bring this whole mixture, sorry, bad view, <laughs> whole mixture to a uh, boil. So yeah, actually that dissolved really quick, a lot, quick, lot quicker than sugar does. So hopefully this will go okay. So I'm gonna turn my uh, oven up now to about a seven and bring that to a boil. I'll continue to let this boil for another minute, around two minutes total, and then I'm gonna turn it back down to a simmer, uh, around five on my stove, it runs a little hot, and I'll let that go until the mixture reaches uh, a setting stage, and you'll know it gets kind of goopy, but I'll show you what it looks like. And when this is boiling, you wanna be stirring this very frequently to make sure that it doesn't stick, because that water will come off of there very quickly. And you'll see me every now and then, I'll just like break up some of the leaves. Sorry, the peel, <laughs> not leaves, don't put the leaves in. Uh, the peel with uh, my spatula as I go, just to keep mashing those a little bit. Back down to the simmer, and now I'm just gonna back off from it and just stir it occasionally, just making sure it doesn't stick again. And my bottles at the back are fully sterilized. They've been boiling for over 15 minutes, so I just bump those down to a medium low heat to keep them warm so that when I pour this warm liquid into them from the, or jam, hopefully not too liquidy, <laughs> Uh, from the jam that it will not uh, break the bottle. You guys aren't here to smell it, but this really is starting to smell like my normal fig jam, just a sugary, sweet smell with a little hint of tartness from the lemon and a bit of the rosemary. And uh, my faithful assistant agrees. Right, Davey? You agree? Yeah, you agree, don't you?
<laughs> All right, I'm gonna keep at this and I will bring you guys back in when it gets to the setting point. Should be about 10 minutes. Okay, so while we are simmering and stirring occasionally, um, just an update, I did a little research on whether or not substituting sweetener will impact the actual preserving process. So the answer from one site, Canning 101, was that it would impact it, especially if you were using Splenda, Stevia, those sorts of things. But nothing mentioned monk fruit or the monk fruit stevia mix, which is what I'm using. The biggest thing they said that would happen was not that it wouldn't preserve, but that it wouldn't thicken. And I actually see this thickening up really nicely and very quickly. Their uh, experience with sweeteners was that you would have to boil it forever to actually get it to thicken and it would give a bitter aftertaste. So, so far, I tasted it a second ago with a clean spoon, don't worry. <laughs> and it does not have a bitter aftertaste and it is thickening on its own. So I think that maybe the fact that monk fruit is natural uh, may be helping out here. I also checked on the National Center for Home Preserves website and they recommended that if you were going to use a sweetener versus a sugar, that you treat it like you're canning in water, which means you have to boil it at a really high heat afterwards um, and cook it at a high heat, which is what I'm doing now. And so they have a really good piece on their page about uh, treating it as though you were canning in water. So I am gonna try and preserve some of this the old fashioned way. Uh, and I'm going to also make some refrigerator jam out of it and see which one I like better. But it does not look like removing it entirely removes the possibility of actually having shelf stable preserves. Uh, it's just that you have to be more careful with how you do it. You have to make sure you reach the right heat and you have to make sure you're using an old fashioned canning process like a water bath um, after you put it in the bottles and that your bottles are well sterilized to keep out bacteria. Getting out nicely and I'm gonna do the age old setting test of putting a little bit on a plate, putting it in the fridge for about five minutes and see if it sets up like jam. Okay, so I actually didn't even have to wait the full five minutes. Um, it's setting up very nicely. It's not running around on my plate or anything like that. So I am gonna go ahead and bottle this and it's even continued to thicken since then. So this is set up even more. So all the things I saw online were talking about artificial sweeteners that are made from a chemical base. Bonk fruit is natural, stevia leaf is natural. So I think this whole earth, which comes from natural ingredients, might actually work better than artificial sweeteners to make sugar free jam. And uh, we will see when we get it in the bottles and boil it. But again, my advice would be, Go to one of these sites like the National Center for Home Preserves or Canning 101 is a good uh, blog site too. Um, and do your own research on whether or not you feel comfortable with using them instead of sugar uh, to make actual preserves. Okay, I'm just getting my boiled bottles out of the water and putting them over here on this clean mat. And then I will also get the lids out and then I will put the preserves okay, in it. I'm just getting ready to put this into this bottle. I don't think there's enough for two, but I did oil too, just in case. Oh, there might be. I'll take it back. So I'm just using this canning funnel to get the poured nice and easily into. Oh, this is the perfect amount for two little jars of jam, actually. Uh, so I'm going to fill those up. The one that's going in the fridge, I left a little more room in the top of it than I did in the other one. I'm just running a plastic tool I have here around it to make sure there's no air down in there. I'm going to finger tighten the lids on, like so, try not to burn myself. <laughs> Experience is a hard feature. Clean towel always, guys. Don't use, don't use things that you've been using around the house before because you don't know what it's picked up as far as bacteria. So when you're starting any kind of canning project, start with everything that's clean and as sterile as possible. Okay, we're just going back over to the stove. We're gonna set this into the warm water, bring it back up to a boil. Okay, I've got these back in, they're boiling. I'm gonna leave them to boil for 15 minutes um, so we can get rid of all the bacteria that might've been in the air and in the uh, preserve. And then I will take them out to cool. Uh, again, I cannot stress enough, do your research on canning temperatures, whether or not you use a thermometer, all of that, um, what type of pot you want to use for the water bath. Uh, but the water bath is is absolutely necessary if you want to preserve on the shelf and not in the fridge. If you're doing fridge preserves, they'll usually be good in there for several weeks without anything other than just cooking and sterilizing your bottles. Um, but if you're doing them so that they're on the shelf, you've got to do a full on water bath, the old fashioned way. Lots of websites on the internet that show you how to do that. All right. They are well boiled. 
and I'm ready to come out. As they cool, the lid should pop down if it is sealed properly. Like I said, I'm gonna do one in the fridge and one on the shelf. I never have the patience to wait for you guys to see the lid pop down. It is kind of cool when it happens. All right, I'm gonna give these a wipe off with my favorite thing. Everybody knows my favorite thing by now is these paper well, cloth towels rather. Oh, there went one. <laughs> Darn it, and we missed it. There's one. There's a difference though, you can see. Up, down. So once it's ready and cooled enough, it'll go down like so. And until it is sealed, it'll look like that. This is sealed. So I came home to check and see if the jam that I had made earlier had set, and it looks like it's half gone. It's the weirdest thing. And then I asked my husband if he ate it and he ran away. So I'm pretty sure he ate it. Um, he did eat it. He said it tasted really good. I'm about to try it right now um, with some of the homemade peanut butter that I made yesterday and some homemade bread that I made the day before. So let's see how it is. And it's got a good jam consistency to it. It's not quite as thick as it is with sugar, but it's not watery by any means. All right, there it is. It's not runny. Yeah, it worked out pretty well. Here we go. Oh, it's good. <laughs> There's no bitter aftertaste either. It's good. It doesn't taste the same as sugary jam does, but it doesn't taste bitter. And it actually kind of tastes like the sugar-free jam that you buy at the store, which I guess is a good sign. So yeah, monk fruit from Whole Earth, or monk fruit and stevia leaf mix made a good sugar-free jam.